Okay, everybody, so this is my review of Euphoria Season 2, Episode 5. If I was to give this episode a title, I would call it The Intervention from Hell. And what's fascinating about Euphoria Season 2 in general is it feels at times like a completely different show, and it's a different show that I'm here for. Like, I think that this feels like a direct continuation in the same vibe that Episode 1 of this season did. Where it's almost like you're forgetting this was a show set in a high school with high school drama. That it feels like you're watching Ozark or you're watching Breaking Bad. And there's a lot of similarities here. And we'll get into that as I go through this review. But first off, we know Zendaya has won an Emmy for Euphoria Season 1. Can she do it again? Well, if the people behind the publicity team are smart, they should obviously submit this as the Emmy submission for Zendaya to have a repeat title here because... Her performance in this episode is incredible. It's incredible because I've been around people in this state that she's in this episode in similar situations, and it's completely accurate. It's so honest and such a natural performance that it just seems like it comes so easy to her, and she's giving 150%. But that doesn't downplay how great the people around here are, in particular, amazing acting by her mother, this episode played by Nika King, and as always by Gia, played by Storm Reed. They're both incredible here as well. And I think they all need some kind of recognition for this episode. And that includes the director here, Sam Levinson, for what they pulled off in this episode. And why I'm saying it feels like an Ozark or Breaking Bad is those shows feel very in reality. They're very, you know, they have that drama that's very real. So this to me reminded me of that same tension and that disturbing feeling that maybe someone would even want to turn this off because it's too close to home. That Breaking Bad in the episode of Ozymandias without spoiling that show. But... It's that same feeling, spoiler alert for Breaking Bad, if you haven't watched it, leave now. But it's that feeling of when he comes back home, you know, and that truth is out now. And it's that disturbing feeling you can relate to. And that kind of, you feel that fully here with Rue's story. So we get a couple twists just in this opening sequence here where this intervention is beginning, but you don't really know it's a full intervention yet that there's other people involved besides her family. And that comes with the line where Rue's like, just drug test me then, she says to her mom. And her mom's like, I don't need to. Jules told me everything. This was a whoa moment. And there's a big line where she says to Rue, you're not a good person, Rue, which isn't the best thing to say in this situation. Obviously, that's a big hiccup and probably a character fault in the character of Rue's mom. And it's complete opposite and is a nice tie into last episode where Rue's having this moment thinking of her dad saying she is a good person to hear that. Not the best thing for her state of mind. But I love some of the writing here when Rue's like, you wish I was different, so do I. You effing hate me, so do I. It's a very dark line, but a very truthful line. And she's saying this while she's panicking looking for the suitcase because A, she knows she's about to go into withdrawal. She needs her drugs. B, she also knows what's going on with this character of Lori and what can happen if she doesn't get this woman her money. And I love how they presented another twist that she goes to her mom, what did you do with the pills? And Jules answers from the other room, we flushed him down the toilet. The way Hunter Schaefer delivered that line was excellent. And it's just a big moment because, okay, Jules is here. This is an intervention. Elliot's here. And it's also completely embarrassing, obviously, for Rue now. And it's something that needs to happen for Rue. This is a big wake-up call like interventions are. And Rue goes in on Jules here, calling her a rat, saying you're dead to me, and that I have a lot of regrets in my life, but meaning you has to be the top of my list. You're a vampire sucking life out of everyone, all about Jules. You like being loved. There's some truth to that about Jules, but this is brutal by Rue, and Jules clearly did the right thing here, as did Elliot, believe it or not, and you know, that's what they're gonna call them though, a snitch, a rat, but this is out of love by Jules, and Jules does the right thing here by just saying I love you back to her and taking all this crap from Rue, but just knowing the state of mind Rue is in. But this is the problem where Rue says, you left me when I needed you at my lowest. This is classic murder syndrome that drug addicts will display and it goes into the guilt that Jules had felt a lot in season one, that this pressure that if she's not there for Rue, that Rue's gonna relapse. And this kind of hits that. And it's a brutal thing for Rue to say. And it's obviously something that really hurts Jules hearing that. And Elliot's a fascinating character to me. I like that he's more fresh on the take of a druggie where, you know, he's like, I liked her the way she was, Rue, feeling now bad about even telling Jules anything, but he has a conscience, you know? He's not this just easy liar, so I like it to kind of, it makes his character more fascinating than we always kind of see that character just being quiet about everything, but he he does have kind of a soul here. So I don't know how Jules and Rue are just even going to be, you know, even on good terms again unless Rue gets completely clean here. And I love how they represent this because when Rue's at her weakest here and now kind of open up to her mom saying, I miss dad, I miss him a lot. I love the shot from Rue's perspective looking down the hallway of Jules just looking at her 
just upset and leaving and there was something haunting about that about you know when will these two even be in the same room again now rude thinks she's going to the er but they're taking her to rehab and what really stays with me and is really hard to watch is when rue says lines in the back of the car like if you didn't do this intervention i was a month from killing myself so this is where the shift of great acting comes to storm reed who plays gia here because watching her hear her sister in this state is heartbreaking And this scene just in the car ride to rehab was so powerful because, you know, anyone watching this, we've all been one of the people in this car, whether it's the mom, the sister, or Rue, and in those shoes, and how it doesn't get darker than this. And you feel for everyone in ways here. And now we see Rue would rather leave and run out of the car than go to rehab, and she almost gets hit by a car. This is the first time out of two times she's run through traffic in this episode. And this is also where the withdrawals are starting to creep in more and more and the symptoms of it. And because of that and feeling this withdrawal, she's really not thinking straight through the episode. And she goes to Lexi's and just already doing just deplorable things like going through Lexi's mom's medicine cabinet and then taking some of her jewelry. (laughs) But when she comes back downstairs, her mom shows up and it's intervention round two here. And she's like, shit. And it's with all her friends this time. Now, this big moment here, which was completely shocking to me, is when Rue says, I can't get clean, can't do that shit forever. But Cassie, you know, they make a joke of it, but she actually says something pretty smart to Rue here where she's like, you don't have to, just take it one day at a time. I actually think that was the right thing to say to someone like Rue in the situation. I thought Cassie meant well. And Rue does just a horrible thing by being completely hypocritical, calling Jules and Elliot snitches this episode. But she totally rats out Cassie here to Maddie to get the attention off of Rue. And it gets Rue to be able to exit and leave the situation. It's such a selfish thing and wrong way of doing it. Especially because Cassie was saying something I thought nice. And she says, how long have you been effing Nate Jacobs? And it just to me is like, if Maddie wasn't in Cassie's house with her mom there and other people there, you know, any other place Maddie probably would have like killed Cassie. So that's going to be a huge turning point for the season. This information is now in Maddie's head about Cassie. Where will this go? It's very interesting. So I'm happy they didn't drag out stories like this. And this was found out halfway through the season. It's the perfect time to kind of keep the story going and momentum. And it makes you, like, excited for next week. Like, oh, God, like, how does next week even start? Like, what is it going to be like with Maddie now and Cassie? It's it's fascinating. And Nate, too. So Rue escapes again. And now she runs to Fez's house and does something even worse, where she literally goes into his sick grandma's room and tries to take her medicine, which is awful. And Fez does the right thing here. Like, no, that that's not happening. And brutally, Rue slams him into the wall. Just violent. It's just bad. It's bad, Rue. She's in this crazy withdrawal state. You know, she's literally gonna shit herself. And I love the line Fez even had in this moment where he's like, you want some Pepto-Bismol or something. It's just great. Like, Fez really is one of the most likable characters. Now, a hiccup in this episode for me was I did think the sequence of Rue robbing this random stranger's house to have more stuff to give Lori later on was unnecessary because I think maybe just have her get more stuff at Lexi's or Fez's place because I just thought that sequence kind of killed a little bit of the flow and kind of was a little redundant where if you look back at the episode as a whole it wasn't really necessary I don't think so it felt like a little bit of padding so I wish they kind of cut that scene now they show a quick little scene I thought was very important was when the mom and Gia are now driving around the neighborhood looking for Rue and the mom's like Gia can you pay attention to help me find your sister and Gia's just on her cell phone texting This kind of scene speaks volumes. It's so short, but it's showing you that Gia, the sister who's always been caring about Rue, is starting to go to the next area where this relationship can happen, where Gia is going to start having less and less sympathy for Rue the more she has these kind of episodes and that she's starting not to care and feel anger towards her. Now, we see Rue in her withdrawals barfs in front of the cops. And it's our second barf, you know, in two weeks. And like I'm saying, it really feels like a different show here. And in a good way. I'm here for it. Like her running from the cops. It's pretty intense. And I thought it was actually a nice comedic moment where she fell into the cacti, plural cactus. And you see the cops also fall into the cacti. I thought that was great. And these cops are literally like as competent as the cops from Superbad. But even little character moments are huge here where, again, where she's running through traffic this time, almost gets killed, but she says, please, God, don't let me die. So it's showing you, yes, there is, deep down through all of this suffering of Ruth, there's still this little will to live. Now, this is where the episode really shines, and it's so strong. I don't know if I like the first scene the best in this episode or this last sequence here with Lori, because Lori is developing herself as this classic villain now. To me, it's like a mix of Angela Kinsey, who plays Angela from The Office, with Gus Fring from Breaking Bad. She's so nonchalant about everything and it's just exciting to watch. 
And I love the line where she's like, I don't think I've ever gotten angry in my entire life. Well, I don't know if that's true. Is that true? She's like, yeah, that's true. Like, really fascinating. And it's like humorous to watch her, but it's terrifying. And she's seeing, you know, Rue going through withdrawal hell and she's saying how awful that situation is. But she's like, you know, Rue, you don't look like someone's going to come with money anytime soon. So we know there, you know, as much as she's saying, oh, poor you, Rue, she still wants her part of the deal, wants her money. And it's really some heavy stuff and sad stuff hearing her talk about opioids and how it burns parts of the brain that make you happy out. It's like someone having a brain who had a major stroke. So, you know, it's really heavy stuff. And anyone who's claimed that this show glorifies drug use, this is the episode you'd show that person and say, no, it's actually showing you how awful drug use is, what it can do to you. And it also shows you the people you're losing and the people then you start being around you like these strangers that are just not good. Everyone had to get chills down their spine when she says a line, one of the good parts of being a woman, even if you don't have money, you still got something people want. You're like, oh no, because we know her threat was like, yeah, okay, you know, you can't get me my money. I'll get that money by selling you off to somebody, which is just terrifying. And I love all the parrots they got going on in this building. And I love a choice that Levinson made as a director here where when Rue's in the bath and Lori's going over to her, that it puts in focus the morphine and not them and that they stay out of focus. And it's just showing you that power that drug has over Rue in this situation, that that even is the main driving force of all of this. And she's like, I just want to die. I'll take anything you have. And again, Lori just so nonchalant about like, okay, you know, here's this morphine that she's going to inject into her, which is not good for Rue. It's another insanely addictive drug. And that creepy line, you know, what's funny, Rue, when I first saw you, I thought this girl was going to be in my life for a long time. Just horrifying. And what brings that sympathy for us, for Rue, seeing her all this stuff is again, seeing worse people around her, but also seeing Rue dreaming about her dad at this wake when she made this speech and cut between her seeing Gia for the first time with her dad and also seeing baby Rue in the hot tub. You know, it brings that humanity back and what's really been on her mind and what causes her to suffer. And it, it hits well, like that eerie feeling of like her waking up in a room. She has no idea where she is in this strange land, strange world. And there's just this parrot here. Like just that scary feeling maybe anyone's been in where you're in just like somewhere that's foreign to you. And the insane tension in this sequence of her trying to get out and there's a parrot in there and a guy with a gun. Really good stuff. It makes me like want to see Sam Levinson just do a whole show in that Breaking Bad Ozark territory. Like, why not? You know, maybe not in Euphoria, but maybe just a separate project down the road because he's really good at it. And what's so impressive is, you know, it comes all around full circle where this episode started in the morning of a day and ends in a full day here. This whole intervention that Rue gets back home and her mom was staying up all night waiting for her. Really fascinating stuff and really well done. But even though she gets away, you know, this is a big plot line here that Lori, she still owes her money. You know, Lori is in the same town, okay? Like, she's not going away. She's either going to get that 10K or she wants Rue to sell herself. So it makes you really excited. I'm happy this episode happened here, that this is like shit hits the fan episode and makes you like, oh my God, like how does next week even start? And that's an exciting feeling to have when you watch a show like, just wanting to see the first couple minutes, like what's going to happen with Maddie and Cassie? What's going to happen with Rue and everything that's just been put on the table here? It's really exciting. This to me was the best episode of Euphoria yet. I think it's going to be divisive because it doesn't really feel like the Euphoria might be used to from season one, but it feels like the highest rate episode by fans and critics alike. Episode one of season two, again, it feels like a continuation of like, okay, you know, Sam Levinson wants to do a lot of different things here. He said that in interviews about season two. He wants to not make it feel a lot like season one. He wants it fresh. But I like where he's going with it. I like this show that's Rue kind of escaping from these crazy people like Lori. It's very interesting to me. And it's like a weird mishmash because you still got this high school drama you're interested in with Cassie and Maddie. So it's fascinating. It's different. I appreciate that. But look, I'm here for this kind of show. But I think some people are really into the high school stuff of it or kind of be like, what am I watching? You know, so I could see that argument for that. But I, for me, I love it. I'm giving it a 9.4. I think it's great. It was just well thought out episode, exciting with great performances, great music like usual and awesome cinematography. But let me know what you thought. Did you think this was the best episode of Euphoria? If there was a better one, let me know what you thought was a better one. Maybe if you didn't even like this episode at all, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you like this direction it's going in? Let me know. I read every comment and try to respond as many as I can. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss one of my reviews of Euphoria. I'll be doing every single episode this season. And if you really love what I do here, I appreciate you become a member today. It will help me do more videos for you guys and interviews and reviews. All that stuff I do will help me do it more. I'd really appreciate a donation and you'll get special perks as well. And please follow me at Steve Arley Show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for more of me. And I'll see you next time.